Okay, whole other world. How many of these are there? Find these segments, huh? While Clementine and that talking ball of light hang out and meditate? Oh, sure, that's right. <laughs> simply part of what I am. Hmm? It's been so long. The difference <laughs> hardly matters. But the battle attack, how comes it here, to Yesha? The red crystal. I have seen them in my restless slumber. The pestilence think of them often. Especially the stones of the Baxotex Earth. I am Bidel of the Vaunt. When this world was young, the pan did service to the green and growing things. Now, the pan betrays the world. And the world, the wolf, betrays the pan. Plague of the pan and defiler of the doe. The wolf hunts all, yet is itself unhunted. To the shame of all pan. Once part of the balance, the immortal ravager has cast aside this world and pledged fealty to the pestilence that would destroy all worlds. And the red doe, that which held the ravager in check for long and long, has not been seen in an age. If it seeks to save its own life and world, the Pasotek must hunt the Ravager and end it. The beast is not alone. The Lamir have given themselves to it in service. One servant of the Eternal Empress. Many Lamir have been seduced by the Ravager's blood-soaked tongue, and thus betrayed the ban. Beware, Pasotek. They will fight until the beast's final breath. <laughs> More than it can imagine, Baxotek.
Okay, this is it. Tech. I can share my wanderings with you, but first, I seek the knowing, the truth of nature held within your ark. You want to answer? So I will ask. Answer these questions true, sweet beast, so that your ark may be known and your eye may open. And do choose wisely. Answer from your heart. Your family are starving. One day, you are out foraging for food when a huge sack of coin falls off the back of a cart. This would be a great boon to your family, but the money belongs to someone else. You have but only a moment to call out and return the coin. Do you keep the money or call out and return it to its owner? I see your wheels turning, sweet beast. A powerful and determined warlord is about to set fire to a crowded cigarette. You have his eldest son in your custody. You could stop the warlord by hurting his son, breaking his arm and threatening to do worse unless the warlord relents and gives himself up. Do you torture your hostage? Or let the crowd fend for itself in the fire. You'd be surprised how little I hear that response. You are part of a group of druids who have been taken hostage by a warlord. One of the warlord's soldiers succumbs to your charms and says he will help you escape. However, the others must be left behind to die, though all have done nothing. Do you abandon your fellow hostages, or do you face death together? Ha! Oh dear. <clears throat> no bother, it's nothing. Moving on. You are the ruler of your people, but a small group of rebels has taken arms against you. You could seek out a mutual solution. But doing so prolongs the conflict and may bear no fruit at all. Or you could wipe them out and end the conflict immediately. Do you treat with the rebels? Or do you preserve the peace? I see. You are an innkeeper. One of your loyal patrons proclaims 
He is to be in prison two days hence for a crime of which he is innocent. In his final days of freedom, he plans to poison those who have wrongly accused him. You know he speaks true, but you can stop him. A simple slip of kyber seed powder into his next drink, and he will be bedridden, but otherwise unharmed, for days. Do you poison him, or do you turn a blind eye to his plots of revenge? Oh, what fun this is! You have chosen your path, sweet beast. Your heart is true. May the power of the Doe's Eye free you from your incarnate shackles. The road... A lovely distraction. Here they come.
I've never seen anything like this before. All right, come and go.
Here we go.
Okay, this is it. Here they come.
This isn't looking good.
And that's over. This place gives me the creeps.
way.
Here they come.
right.
All right, come and get some.
Looks like I'm full up. That won't fit.
Well, at least that's over.
Yeah. <laughs>
happened here?
cannot be crossed without pain at all. Mm, here bleeds the lie. Here mules the old order. Kill it. Kill the doll, and we shall seal our pact. Radiation of this pest. This lie.
Cool. It's over. Okay, this is it.
glad that's over. Feel that later.
I've never seen anything like this before.
Here they come. Blade and spear, shield and stone, two arms, they come! They... I... What? A Paxotep. A terrible wonder, even for one who has seen many wonders. If its kind walk Yesha foreigner, then surely the wheel of the world is set to turn again, perhaps. Perhaps it will grind me at last. Pain, now, outweighs peace in the measure of my days. God murderer. 
traveler tried once. She came upon me at first light, when the dew had not yet fallen from the grass. A carpenter, and daughter of a carpenter who was a carpenter's son. The branches took her at once. I wonder if her saw is still clenched within her fair hand. How came I to this wretched state? <laughs> its eyes reached the question before its tongue left home or hearth. The tumbling ruin beneath its tender pads was once a fortification. An encircling bulwark to the greatest conurbation ever brought forth on Yasha's soil. Such faith we put in its solidity. Merchant and marshal, peasant and prince, their souls kneeled at the altar of within and without. But a wall is a false god, built to crumble. The only thing a wall ever truly divides is a fool from his wisdom. The rifts open swiftly. They split the bulwark stone as a hot needle kisses the onion skin of a boil. And the bus poured through on tangled wooden limbs. Yes, the final calamity. Their numbers endless. They rushed upon us like a river in flood. The end began. Ah, teeming with life. The sun has never shone on a city greater ruin so that I might not even visit it in dreams, charnel by the roof. Yes, the final calamity. Their numbers, endless. They rushed upon us like a river in flood. The end began. For 40 days, we fought them on these steps. The soldiers fell first, then the officers. Then they called upon the priests. We knew the children would be next. And so, we flung our very bodies into the breach. So, were torn apart like green shoots in a glutton's teeth. Others were swallowed whole and vanished from the sphere. I stuck, anguished cork in a malign bottle. It seethes around me. It waits to disgorge its grotesqueries once more upon Yasha's scalded skin. Please, Paxlete. Wanderer, it who would do right, put its edge to this cursed snarl, vent its rage upon it. I shall greet death as an old friend, and we shall go hand in hand to the horizon leaving the suffering of this blasted heath far behind. Destroy the knot.
Oh, holy hell. of good soil beneath my hooves, or the kiss of the wind, or my free fur. Faithless, faithless have I been, and yet Axaltec came, with war in its right hand, and temperance in its left, the Paxaltec came, and I am saved. Two-handed warrior, it has my allegiance. Whatever may come. Paxeltec have a gift for death, this much is true, but they are not all destroyers. Perhaps if it fights with us, perhaps the root may yet be crushed under the wheel of time. Take this. Though it be a relic of Willamer, stewards of death. Wield it in defense of life. No thanks is needed, for I owe it a debt unpayable. <laughs> I think I shall linger here a while yet. Many are those who fell on these blood-soaked steps. No, some are now not but bones. They each deserve the funerary rites of royalty. These I shall endeavor to complete with whatever time is left to me. If its road should ever wind this way again, grace me with a visit. There are yet tales of Yesha, I might tell it, if it cares to hear them shared. On the contrary, <laughs> it has been ages since I felt so very much alive. Ah, uh, let us first be properly introduced. Eh? <sighs> Once I was called Lich, foremost of the Laymer. Hmm? Uh, I priest of the dead. How oh, I gloried in that title. Would that I had known the irony. A funerary priest of the deathless, the highborn, hmm? one who wraps the powerful in glory, and the Muslim who seals the secrets of the eternal empress with sweet seed oil. And with night, Sam, we guarded the flesh of the great and sought their resurrection among these trusted sacred man. I was the utmost. Uh, I relish the favor of her permanence. More fool I. For many epochs, the highborn did not fear the flow of time, for the fruit of the same tree kept it at bay. But there are other ways to die. Misadventure. <sighs> The Eternal Empress dreamed of defeating this final terminus. If life could be taken, could it not be given back? The flesh was preserved against that question's answer. This was the province of the Lamir. But let us start at the beginning. Hmm? Much would I have it know. And to know all, it must know what is first. Would it hear the history of the pan? In the time before time, the pan lived in the place that was. It is said that there came a great plague that ravaged the land so that the fields were seeded only with the bones of the dead and yielded only 
the cries of the bereft, with his flock drowning in woe, the leader of the pan held forth a great decree. One hundred ships were built to hold ten thousand souls, with their god of many faces cutting the waves before them. The pan that were ventured across the Vilgmarza, the dark sea, through the long night. The forms prayed and the red widows wept, for no one knew if the dark sea had a far shore. One hundred days lit the hundred ships, and one hundred nights drew their swaddling across them too. <sighs> But on the hundred first day, as the Red Widow in the foremost ship bowed her horns to the god of many faces, a bird lit between them, singing, Glory to the Pan, for they have reached the Kin Mother. Yesh arose like the dawn before them, unseen, untamed, and free. The king who was, him known to the pan as Kolked the War handed, later Kolked the War begun, and at last as Kolked the Wise. Quick of blade was he in his youth, a fearsome general who watered the tree of progress with the lifeblood of many enemies. But the exploits of youth brought Colquette no peace in age. They say he took the plague as fate's judgment against his warlike eye. Fate offered a choice, flee the land of his fathers or end his line as the King of Death. Kokep hesitated no more in pilgrimage than he had in war. He raised up ships as once he had raised regiments. He sailed from the place that was with a heart full of hope. He was never to see Asia's shores. He passed in peace before the crossing's end, greeting death. <sighs> with grace. The god of many faces had been with the pan since the place that was longer. None speak of a time before its guardianship. It was a god as real as the soil beneath us. A god one could visit, a god one could touch. Its ways were not known, but all agreed it loved us and ever would. More would I have it here of this, for this tendril twines with its own. <sighs> but patience to hand it one, each thing in time. In those days, there was no empress. There were no queens. Colquette the Wise passed on the Dark Sea and left no heir. It was only agreed that the clergy should step in where Colquette had stood. The Vaughns spoke for the Many-Faced One, and the Red Widows spoke for the Sun, Stone, Sky, and Stream. It had been ever thus. Now. They linked hands to cradle the destiny of the pan. For eighty days, the Vaughns fell prostrate upon Yesha's unfamiliar shore. Mm. They prayed for a sign that our searching was over, and that this forest should be ours. On the eightieth day, two forms emerged from the depths of the jungle. First came a doe, with coat of red, where it walked. The soil gave forth flowers and sweet berries, and they took it as a sign of grace. But behind the doe came another, 
A wolf with fur as lightless as the obsidian waves that Pan had so lately crossed. Surely, this great beast was a portent of death. Yet, desperate were these threadbare priests of old, and of these visions to their charges, these fonts spoke only one. And why not? The dough fills all who glimpse it with a spirit of hope and a sense of growth. It leaps among the shrub and bramble even now, even with the Asia sundered by the root. There are those who think it more than a spirit, a god in waiting. These call themselves the children of the Red Doe. The carpenter's daughter was one such. Huh. May her faith be rewarded. May her spirit roam the forest alongside the Doe forever free. Those who glimpse the Doe often glimpse the wolf, for the latter seems compelled to pursue the former. Yeah, yeah, to hear those early Vaughns tell it would be to hear of many different wolves in pursuit, and only one though. A simple deception, but a far-reaching one. Modern Pan know the truth. What must it be to spend an eternity chasing that which one might catch but may not kill? For the wolf and the doe have often met, and clur and tooth. Hoof and claw. <laughs> the doe may spill the wolf's blood, and the wolf may taste the doe's flesh, but never the other's life to take. Yesha itself forbids it. They say the chase has driven the wolf quite mad. With the assurance of the Vaughns, the Pan took to Yesha and she to us. And for a time, there was stillness. Pan were born who had never known the land that was, nor the endless sea at their backs. One such was called Genus. She was but fifteen springs when she felt the calling of the Red Widows. And not three more when she felt the touch of sickness. <sighs> As Genus approached the door of death, she sought her sisters, for there were no Lamer yet, and it was the Red Widows who ushered the Pan into the soil. But Genus's malady was known to the Widow Mother, to her, to the Elder Pan. It seemed the plague had found them again, even on this distant shore. Genus was shunned cast out into the jungle, and her name was forbidden from Pan lips. None among them could have foreseen what would come next. Plague-ridden and scorned, the Red Widow genus had been cast into the jungle to be forgotten. But fate had other plans. After many days in the jungle, genus emerged. The Pan were humbled, for all signs of plague had been lifted from the young genus, replaced by a regal gate none could deny. Fascinated, all assembled to hear her tale. <laughs> and quite a tale it was. Gina spoke of a vision that had come upon her as she lay in the moss, gasping out her last. In her vision, the plagues had returned. Pan, young and old, wailed and keened and spat their last blood on Yesha's pristine sand. But then, when all seemed lost, a great tree rose out of the jungle, strange and wonderful and heavy with luminous fruit, this tree. The Thane, she named it, gave all who ate of it a life unending. The Pan embraced it, 
and their glory stretched on. For a thousand epochs, Zenos rose to power on this. Mm. A spire built of words. By spreading her message of doom and salvation, huh. the Red Widows were easy converts, inclined to believe their sister, and eager to spread her vision to all the pan. In time, they held more sway than even the Vaughns. <laughs> it was a great shift. It would not be the last. Among the Red Widows, Genus was quickly elevated to Widow Mother. The crops flourished, and the villages spread. The jungle receded from the shore. It is difficult to say. Genus has had charge of her own legend for an age of ages. Suffice to say, there is enough truth to her vision for me to know her personally. Though I was born some thirty mothers hence, and yet, in knowing her, I find its question impossible to answer. Uh, but we get ahead of ourselves, two-handed one. Many seasons passed, and Genus grew stooped and lined as all Pan before her had. In her 77th winter, Genus had another vision. The Thane called to her, and she told her people it was time to seek it out. For the calamity was imminent. Five hundred Pan were assembled to undertake the expedition. Genus herself, a contingent of Red Widows, a party from each of the villages. Many imagined they would never see their queen again. Those that lived long enough came to know the taste of those words. When Genus, now as young and beautiful as the day she first beat death, emerged from the jungle once more, with 49 immortals at her back, she had been reborn a second time. As an Empress Eternal. For years they searched the forest battling hunger, storms, and beasts red of tooth and claw. Twenty winters passed. Many succumbed to death or to doubt by the 21st spring. Only five Red Widows and 44 common Pan stood at Genus' side. It was they whom she led into the clearing. It was they who beheld the Thane. It was they who tasted the fruit and felt time's weight fall from their shoulders. No plague has touched the Pan since, but Calamity wears faces nearly as numerous as our god of old. Unless I am much mistaken, the Empress lives yet, for no funerary smoke has filled the sky above her ziggurat. <laughs> if the pan vanish from Yesha's soil, I imagine she will be the last to depart. With death thus leashed, the eternal genus and her immortals brought forth an empire heretofore unknown. Great ziggurats were hewn from the living rock, and at their feet grew great cities lit by arcane magics. Genus's prophecies all came about, save one. <sighs> if only the pan of that epoch had wandered as it does, two-handed one. What of the great calamity? But none worried. Save a few vaults. The old ways were dying, and the Empress was not. No achievement seemed beyond the reach of the Pan. It was then that the wolf came. Ah, but the story of Yesha is the story of who tastes the fruit of the Thane Tree. 
Forty-nine immortals begat many more. A deathless aristocracy. They traded favor with the empress, traded years of life itself like fishmongers at market. They called it the Ravager, the very obsidian beast the Vaughns of old had glimpsed and hidden. It sprang from the jungle as sudden as a squall. It made no more than mutton of the bravest warrior. Fear fell like night across the empire. Death roamed the Asia. Ravenous death none could tame. There were those who would have seen the beast slain, but the Ravager was never much glimpsed that the Red Doe should not follow. And vice versa, the green things of the jungle sprang from the Red Doe's feet. But on what do green things grow, if not the flesh of departed life? Who knew what would become of the Doe if the Ravager were felled? Who knew what would become of the jungle? Who knew what would become of the Thane Tree? It was the twice humbled Vaughns who kept the Empire from vanishing down the Ravager's throat. For the Vaughns had pondered the beast since it first appeared to them on Yesha's shores. It was they who had learned to listen to Aphir's song. They who learned to appease the Ravager with tribute, with dance, and with music, balance returned, and the wheel of time rolled on. The song of all living things. It permeates our forest. It whispers in the leaves, throbs in the soil, shines in the sun, babbles in the stream. The Vaughns devote themselves to the song's mystery. They play it to tap its power, as other Pan might use the energy of a crystal, or the heat of a flame. Those attuned in prayer hear it strongest, but all may catch its strain from time to time, even a Paxotec. Who is to say? For that was hardly the last calamity to befall the Pan at <sighs> With the Ravager appeased, the Empress dreamed of rule eternal. She should likely have had her wish. But for one thing, the Thane Tree, that of the fruit of immortality, began to die. For many lifetimes her permanence hid this knowledge from all who served her, slave and immortal alike. And why not? She had amassed a great store of fruit, and surely something could be done to save the tree. Why crack the very bedrock of her society? But the tree's decline could not be arrested. Fruit was rationed. Noble lineages withered. We lay there. Once prepared for the final death of death, only those immortals who had fallen in battle or by misadventure. Now, we found ourselves winding wizened nobles in sap and muslin by the hundreds. Perhaps what came next was inevitable. Rebellion, insurrection, revolt. This was the fire that was to sweep through Yesha's jungle. For a life of lifetimes, the Eternal Empress had hidden the decline of the Thane Tree. But like the Vaughns of old, had underestimated the power of one young, plague-addled Red Widow. Genus herself failed to foresee the power of one called Navoon. Ah. Navoon was one of her eternity's own guards. How she learned of the rot at the roots of the Thane Tree, I cannot say. I know only that she had no taste for the Empress's deceptions. Navoon fled the ziggurat and spread the news far and wide. Her words found home in the ears of the gull, Yesha's slave caste. 
No slaves could hope to challenge the power of an immortal aristocracy. But what about a nobility in disarray? One where the great and powerful would soon fight for scraps of fruit like bare rib dogs? They rose, first singly, then in a tidal wave. The Empress found herself at war. Perhaps she might have won, if not for the Destroyer. Ever was Gina served by the Red Widows. She was still Widow Mother, is still, if such a thing has any meaning now. Some among the Widows' ranks forswore tenderness and became instead her permanence's highest guard. Genus herself had been the lowest widow in her order, and she had turned pan society inside out. How fitting, then, that the last and least of her own widow guard should become her greatest adversary. It bridled when I called it God Murderer. Surprised I am that it should know so little of the deep track its kind have trekked across our soil. Let us walk those prints now, that it should be enlightened. It has heard of Yesha and civil war, of slave with blade of hoe to neck of noble, and noble with point of sword to belly of slave. Into that tempest walked one of its kind, Basildek. I cannot say why, though perhaps it might someday tell me from whence, well, whatever its motive. Hither came the Destroyer, even as the Pan turned their ravenous gaze toward the fruit of immortality. Our god of many faces remained satisfied with the scant worship of the vaunts and the commoners. It was an ever-present comfort. A guardian we scarcely thought of. The destroyer, Axeltech, oh yes, its kind, drove its blade into the pure heart of our guardian. We knew not that it was the god of many faces who kept the root from this world, but in death, many faces' absence was soon felt. In her world already torn by war, where caste let blood of caste, there came reports of some new woe. Travelers spoke of twisted horrors on the road, but we who relished in the weight of this wall only scoffed. Who knew that the very air could rip, that the world itself could tear and spill like a wineskin under hoof. Oh, how we fought, priest and prince and pauper, side by side, our world's lifeblood drizzling through our fingers as we clutched at the hanging tatters of Yesha's slit throat, most perished. And I became enmeshed. I thought our tale told, our race run. And yet, and yet, among the pan there is a saying, why just ask the Rin? I gave the impression, perhaps, that Yesha was uninhabited at the arrival of the Pan. Save for the doe, the wolf, the birds, and the beasts. This is not so. The Rin slink Yesha's canopy on leathery wings. Perhaps they once thought to defend their forest. But Lash and Lure put that to rest. Lash, in that no Rin could hope to withstand the onslaught of energy we Pan have learned to draw from Yesha's native crystal. The Flying Ones have no talent for crystal craft. 
lure in that under normal circumstances, Rin eggs reach maturity only with great difficulty. I know not who first discovered the potential for symbiosis between our species. Uh, only that it is a whimsical god indeed who sends the most precious resource one kind could hope to acquire out the hind end of the other. As sure as there is iron in the soil of Yesha, there is irony. <laughs> it was a pad-footed Paxiltech who slew our guardian and brought the root. Would it be so strange to see a Paxiltech drive them from our shores? Perhaps, perhaps as with Genus and the Voon. The strangeness is the point. It has done me a service unpayable. No reward can suffice. But perhaps, if it cannot be rewarded, it can be equipped. Kolket brought war, then wisdom. Its forebears brought the root, but its wisdom stayed the flames, that I might live beyond the hated knot. Take this now, as a token of my gratitude. The Pan must put their faith in action and belief, not weapons and walls. I forever owe it thanks, as shall the many souls scattered on these steps. To them I must tend. Be well. Two-handed warrior, be Strange Fate's agent. I've <laughs> never seen anything like this before. Here they come.
Now. And where it stands, it dies. Oh, oh, oh. maybe we could talk about this. Duck. <sighs> it seems it shall live for now. But tell us, Paxeltek, what woes does it bring this time? It stands before the Eternal Empress, once and future ruler of Yesha. Her Majesty asks once more, what brings the Paxotec to her court? Answer, for eternal life is not the same as eternal patience. From the Krell to Ford to the Destroyer, Paxotec ever serve the wants of the self. <sighs> there is no name more cursed in these royal halls. When the pestilence came, Ford succored the schismatics. Treachery turned to ruin. Ruin to desperation. Her Majesty would see Ford bleed would see all Paxotec put to the blade! But the Paxotec prowess is fearful. Ford, the Destroyer, and others were staggering, undeniable. Perhaps Paxotec's strength can serve to liberate rather than oppress Her Majesty. In her eternal wisdom, will grant it grace. The Paxotec's life in exchange for another's. Gods, teach the Paxotec to bow before eternity! A permanent at in a step. It has passed the test. But it laid these guys low, proving that it was the one her permanence seeks. The one for a task both deadly and delicate. Ah, forbearance, Paxeltec. Her permanence suspected it would meet the challenge, but she had to be certain. Assured, unequivocal. The reward she offers is great. She desires nothing more than to bring the Nunyatav back to the pan. To let her subjects share the death of death with her. Restoration. This desire burns steadily. Like her eternity, it is unexpected. Distinguished by the turning of passion, 
of bias of the sundering. But a dark spirit bedevils her will. An abomination, a mockery, a horror, wretched in her sight. Let its Paxiltech nature touch this abomination. Be not her bane, but her blade. Fell the creature in tribute, then it shall have its reward. Be brief, even to frequent supplication tests her eternity's grace. Does it need a reason to obey eternity? Hmm. Perhaps hating the fiend as we do would sharpen its edge. We once had a guardian, a god of many faces. This one of many was destroyed by Paxiltech. And now, in the Guardian's rotting remains, root and ruin have entwined into a horror and mockery of divinity. Hmm, just so. Hmm. Peace and greatness, Paxotec. Nunyatav will once again return to the Eternal Court, bringing immortality to the deserved. And the Deathless One will put her hoof through the black heart of the Root. The end of the root is a blessing to all. Her eternity aches to sing them into oblivion. When the Dark Spirit wormed its decay into our god, the husk of the Blessed Thane grew malign. The eternal ziggurat was torn asunder. Our world now hangs by its tendrils, and our future by a strand of hope thinner still. Its sympathy is poor recompense for what its kind have cost the pan. The foolish Kuri Kuri could sooner comprehend the desires of the sun than the Paxotec could grasp the powers of her permanence. Not as she does. None can. The path to desire is neither easy nor safe. Go forth, Blade. Cut away the rot that plagues this world. Prove there is one Paxotec that is more useful living than dead. What is it, Paxotech? Be brief. Even to frequent supplication tests her eternity's grace. Mm. Peace and greatness, Paxotech. Nunyutav will once again return to the Eternal Court, bringing immortality to the deserved. And the Deathless One will put her hoof through the black heart of the Root. The end of the Root is a blessing to all. Her eternity aches to sing them into oblivion. When the Dark Spirit wormed its decay into our god, our world now hangs. <sighs> Her tread can.
sake, I will choose to believe that. If it will excuse me, I have important work to do. Yes, thanks, and uh, goodbye. Hello again. Persistent. Mm. I actually admire that quality a great deal. It is underrated, in my opinion. Well, fever dream or no, if the Paxel Tech is going to be hanging around, I suppose I should tell it my name. I am Rothinder Achenwald. Hello. Oh, it is struggling. Poor thing. Hmm. The Paxoltec dream creature may do as it pleases. Walt has more important things to consider. A pleasant jet. Surprisingly so. Indeed. Thanks and goodbye. It 
cannot be helped, can it? The curiosity! It is killing the Paxotec as surely as it is killing me! Knowledge is the only cure. This mural here on the cave wall, can it comprehend the meaning? A trick question, of course. I have dedicated my life to learning so that I may find the answers I seek and put the pieces together. After years and years of searching this jungle, I have finally found proof of what I knew all along. Of what it asks. <laughs> proof of all that matters in the whole world. Proof that the lost tribe of the Pan does exist. See, I have found the location of their civilization. It is no less than miraculous. Ah, I have gotten ahead of myself, have I not? I do apologize. My manners are not what they once were. I have been alone a long while now. A very long while. <clears throat> what uh, brings the parcel tech here? How can Walt be of service? If it is looking to spend, I have a few valuable items I may be willing to part ways with. Funding for my research must be procured by whatever means necessary. It is as good a time as any to stock up. It is leaving. How odd. The wandering Baxel Tech returns. As anticipated. If it is in need of a friend, Walt could hmm, perhaps step in. Yes, uh, perhaps indeed. Ah, I thought it would never ask. This ancient mural is a gift from the lost tribe of the Pan. My long sought after proof of their existence. They were real, and they landed here, far removed from Genus and her Thean fruit. Imagine the freedom, the adventure. The fear, yes, but also the exhilaration. They were not unlike myself. Adventurers to the core. If only I had descended from one of their lot instead. Ah, but no time for pointless musings. From this mural, paired with my own independent studies, we can deduce that their ships were separated from the rest. They were assumed killed by the ocean's fury. But in truth, they arrived here and etched out a living as best they could under Thalos's mighty leadership. King Thalos was the son of Kolket and the Lost Tribe's leader. When they landed ashore, he led them into the underground tunnels and helped redefine their way of living to survive. It is a nasty jungle, as the Boxel Tech has no doubt noticed. But tragedy struck the tribe, as it does. My ancestors fell ill, beginning with brave Thalos, afflicted by the same disease that destroyed the ancient Pan society and forced them to abandon their homeland. I. I do not know what happened next. Not yet. But I will know soon enough. Mark my words, Paxotec. This is history in the making. The Paxotec must clean out its ears, hmm? When the ancient Pan left their homeland to escape the plague, several ships were separated from the rest and landed here. Thelos was their leader and helped build a new society, but he soon fell ill with that same plague. <laughs> its sense of things is keen. Indeed I am, shall we say, a distinct pen. A commoner who loathed the idea of a soldier's life and dreamed of finding the lost tribe and perhaps others like myself. I grew up hearing stories about the lost tribe and was always told they were merely a child's tale. Well, 
I knew better, of course. My heart told me otherwise. It's much like the power of the life song, which can sing life into the lifeless. No flesh, no blood required. It is a song I can nearly, nearly hear. But not quite. Yet I search, ear to the ground. <laughs> no one believes me about that either, of course. I have always been an outsider because of these beliefs. Not fitting in anywhere with anyone. I am strange as the Baxter Tech so aptly observed. And so I took quite well to years of solitude, just me and my research. I became accustomed to the loneliness. Now would be an appropriate time for the Baxter Tech to make a purchase in support of Walt's research. Where should I look next? Huh? 
It's nice to see a familiar face around these parts, even if it is a strange and harmless one. Hmm? It has arrived at an opportune time. See, I have found another mural. This one is more than I could have ever dreamed of. This discovery is downright exhilarating. The implications, the possibilities, it's overwhelming in the best of ways. <clears throat> Excuse me, I... <laughs> have a tendency to get carried away. Is my Paxotec friend in need of something? What is intriguing the Paxotec, I wonder? Listen well. Thalos survived the plague that had long haunted the pan. After falling ill, he began hearing an unusual sound that seemed to come from the ground itself. Music. Strange music, with no instruments or voice to carry it. He ventured out to find the source, and what he found was her. Lydusa, a goddess of stone. In exchange for a year of companionship away from his people, she promised to cure him and give him the means to cure the others. He agreed. In his time away, the plague had ravaged his tribe. But he was able to save those who remained and start over anew. The goddess had granted him an unusually long life, and he ruled over the Pan for several prosperous centuries. The Pan worshipped their new goddess, building a temple and singing her praises. Here is the exciting part. It is said that she grew fond of the Pan and actually taught them how to use her power over the living stones. Watch that fleshy mouth, Paxortek! Ah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Carried away. C carried away. The living stones are real. The result of the same precious life song I have searched for all my days. I knew I was meant to find both the song and the tribe. Now I understand why! Walt is a servant of fate! 
Does its furless skin have chills yet? In time, it will understand. I know this to be true. The power I speak of is great. Lydusa selfishly kept much of it to herself, but she at least taught the Lost Tribe to hear the music of the stones and control them in some small capacity. Naturally, they craved more. As do I, my friend. As do all of us with the heart of an adventurer. I... Yes. Yes, it does. Everything, as it were. See, I have been chasing this dream since I was a child. I was a commoner, born for nothing but bloodshed and servitude. But I did not want that for myself. <laughs> I wanted to believe the Lost Tribe was real, that they were out there somewhere. So I studied, became as clever and useful as I could, and at a young age, I was chosen to serve Genus herself. After many years of loyalty, I was assigned to a mission to explore the uncharted jungle. It was the chance I had been waiting for. So, here I am, chasing my dreams across cave and jungle. And finally, finally, I am nearing the answers I have long sought. I am on the trail, my friend. They could still be out there, or if not, Perhaps the secret of their power over stones. This could change my life, change our whole society. Oh, but one step at a time, I must not get ahead of myself. There is still much to unravel. I can hardly stand the excitement. Ah, it must listen well, yes. When the ancient Pen left their homeland to escape the plague, several ships were separated from the rest and landed here. Thelos was their leader and helped build a new society, but he soon fell ill with that same plague. Understood, my friend. Will that be all? I hope my friend's journey is as fruitful as my own.
Great. More bad news.
Now what? What?
Bags full.
the Eschaton. I have assumed countless names and infinite forms. Clawbone, Nightmare, Root, all meaningless. All avatars of a single, infallible will. Mine. I am everywhere. I bring inevitability, cessation, the end of all beginnings. A mere human cannot prevent its destined end. The creation of your Earth served my design, a link to the core, the first beginning. A yawning rift from which I could whisper and reach. Your kind did not halt the end, human. You orchestrated its coming. You understand nothing. And your endeavors to prevent cessation will fail. To become... Become one, to become all, and in becoming, to end, become one with my will, human. Submit. Still, you would struggle against the inevitable, then you will join the death throes of a thousand worlds. All must be done for
you feel within, turning your inside cold and still. That's my curse, the touch of Lydusa. So you will answer my questions and do as I say. Tell me why a wicked beast intrudes upon this secret place. Exploration is thin-veiled shelter for intrusion. You wish to steal from me, like all the other wicked beasts. Won't take anything from Lydusa. Not anymore. But what's most precious to me has already been taken. The wicked beasts, the hooved ones, they stole Lydusa's precious thing. Without it, I can't tell my singing stones to cease their song of wrath. Yes, the singing stones belong to Lydusa. Once they sang only sweetly. It was my magic that first sung them to life. A song to make them twirl and dance like wind-caught sand. But the wicked beasts twisted my sweet song to screams. I screamed and screamed. Now, poor Lydusa has lost something precious. The beasts stole it and locked it away. I can't sing without it. You, hopeless beast, will find my precious thing and return it to me. Only then will I free you from Lydusa's stone touch curse. I... I... I don't remember. But it was precious to me. And it was sundered. Stolen. Without it. I am Shadow Split. I am not me. I am not Lydusa. When you find it, Beast, you will know that it's mine. That it is precious. Now go, before you become petrified and useless. Ask. I have not spoken to anyone in so long. to them. What happened to them? Ask their corpse dust what happened to them. The wicked beast took what was not theirs. Now their squished flesh rots into loam. Lydusa was kind. She gave and gave. Wisdoms, magics, even the sweet lilted song of the stones. But it was not enough for the beasts. Never enough. Not even in the end. Wicked, wicked beasts. They deserved their deaths and more. This wistful, empty hollow was the throne room of Huth King Thanos. But I didn't visit him here. No, not once. I couldn't stand the mollycoddles of the mortals. Yet I sense him here still. His life's imprint, drifting in the dust memory of this hollow. So I stay. My Thanos, 
son of Colquette and king of the Hooved. He arrived at this land lost and blighted, and one day stumbled upon my sleepy grotto. He sung me the sad song of his people, fractured from their herd. Such a poor and pitiful beastie he was. Sweethearted Lydusa cured him of his plague blight in exchange for a year and a day. A year and a day spent with me. Is it? I've taken naps quite longer. How fleeting mortals are. Thalos and I spent each day together. I taught him the song of the stones. And we sang and danced atop the cliff tops. From dawn till dusk. Our bond peaked higher than the mounts, or and deeper than the depths. A bond no other beast could ever understand. Oh, how I did not wish him to go. But he was a hoof king, and his people were his heart's grotto. He returned to them, and as a final gift, I taught him the cure touch for his people's blight. He built me a temple within his golden city, and he would visit me again and again, for I would not allow his life song to fade. But then, he was taken from sweet Lydusa, taken, stolen, taken by the wicked beasts. Terrible, wicked beasts. I will speak of them no more. The only one here, but not the only spirit. My sisters have all scatter danced to the wind to spread flower bloom and newborn springs. Only steadfast, lonesome Lydusa remains. I cannot go, beast. Not until I take back what is mine. Not until I'm me again, unbroken from all these pieces. Made whole. Until then, I remain here. So that is the dreadful stench drenched upon you. Hoofed ones, here. No, no, no. They should all be gone. My singing stones will crush this wonder hoof. <laughs> this beast is as naive as a newborn pebble. The hoofed ones are all muck and dirt water on their inside. Soft, sweet Lydusa taught them the song of the stones. Singing stones to heat their food pots, cradle their little ones, carry their packs. Yet still they took. Still they stole. Still they hurt. I too trusted them once. I thought them harmless. But only lovely Thalos was a gem carved from a different rock. And the wicked ones took him too. This Wanderhoof had dare not intrude upon my Deuce's secret place. Or my singing stones will shred him through. No more. No more. So long, beast. I won't lift my curse touch until you find my precious thing.
They had no choice. Sometimes one must do what must be done. They had no choice. Hmm? Oh, ha! Forgive me, my friend. I have a lot on my mind. I found another piece of the story, and I am another step closer to the truth. It is tragic. Bloody. A betrayal, some might say. But they would be wrong. That is just the way of things. Trust me. I know all too well. Anyway, does the Puxel Tech need something? I have new items on offer. I hope I have something of use for its journey. What is on its Paxultec mind? A priesthood was formed in service to the goddess, and she taught them alone to wield the power of the living stones. The simple things only, from what I can gather. Heating pots on command, lulling young ones to sleep and things of the like. But there was so much more potential. This divine power was right at their fingertips, but she selfishly kept it to herself. It must have been maddening. Yes, I'm certain it was. They made a plan to trap her. One day a year, she took mortal form and required Thalos to lie with her. Our noble king was dubbed the Bloodless King because he never sired a child. It was because of her. He was under her spell. She was less powerful in her mortal form. So when that night came around, they used their own ancient magics and captured her. Thelos was enraged and fought back, killing his own kind. Yeah, they had no choice but to capture him as well. Thelos was driven mad by the goddess. He would not listen to reason. So they imprisoned him and took control of the kingdom. Knowing the goddess was fond of her royal pet, they bartered his life in exchange for the secrets of her power. They got what they wanted, what they needed to safeguard their society. Using her power, they were able to create living constructs to do their bidding. And so, the pen went from living like savages to an era of swift advancement. Imagine having such Power in the palm of one's hand. Power like that could change the fate of our people, even those deemed unworthy of the Thane fruit. It is tragic, but that is the way of history, of the world. One must rise from tragedy, stronger than before. The secret of this power must still be around here somewhere. I can feel it. Trust me, my friend. This day will live on in the annals of history forever and ever. Why? Why? Because I have sacrificed everything for this knowledge, for this power that I am on the cusp of unearthing. This could change everything for me, for all commoners, for all of Yesha. It has no idea. Dear, what I have endured to get here. The suffering, the loneliness, the ridicule. How the Lanier laughed and laughed at poor Walt. It was humiliating. And then there were those wasted, tortuous years serving Genus. That cruel tyrant who none of us chose to do anything she asked of me. Anything. I did everything she asked of me, and she asked a great deal. Whenever there was blood to be spilled, there I was in the night. Dagger in hand. Important figures. Commoners like me. Even children. It was the only way to prove my loyalty. I... 
did not mean to. I, I, I did not want to, but I had to do it. That was the only way she would ever trust me enough to explore the uncharted jungle. It was for the greater good. It really was. I just... Wish I could forget their eyes. The look of betrayal in their eyes as they breathe their last breath. As long as I live, I never want to see that look again. My friend, my first and only friend, he must think Walt is a monster. And perhaps I am. But my heart is true. If nothing else, believe that much. Ah, if I must. When the ancient Pan left their homeland to escape the plague, several ships were separated from the rest and landed here. Thelos was their leader and helped build a new society, but he soon fell ill with that same plague. He came upon a stone goddess, Lydusa, who cured him in exchange for a year with her. Lydusa also gifted him long life, so when he returned, he cured the survivors and ruled for centuries. The band loved him and worshipped Lydusa. Walt will not give up. Please, friend. I hope it will support my research if it is able. Believe in me. Someone must.
Here we go. Is that a pooch? Come here, come on, come on, boy. Oh, God, it's been ages since I saw one. Man's best friend right there. Wait, what the? Well, I'll be damned. Either you're a human, or I ate some bad mushrooms. I haven't seen a fellow Earthling in decades. All right, explain yourself, or I start shooting. Uh, I'm asking the questions around here, kid. Where did you come from? And what are you doing in my home base? Talk. And if I like what you say, you may just walk out of here alive. So get talking. Then you are from Earth. I knew it. Wonders never cease. At ease. I'm Private Jack Driver. Now, this is gonna sound crazy, but I've been stranded here on Yesha for over a century. I may be an old man now, but I was actually a kid when I first came here. <laughs> New recruit. Fresh out of boot camp. Life has been... trying, to say the least. I would be dead if not for my survival training. Hell, you've thrown me for a loop here. I feel like I'm dreaming, but... Well, those types of dreams usually involve go-go boots. Mr. Sandman has lost his touch if I'm asleep. Get in line, kid. The white in my gruff and my horrible back pain tell me I've been waiting a lot longer for answers than you have. I'll go first. It wasn't a question, but glad you're making it easier on yourself. Now tell me, is America still safe? Still free? Did, did we beat the Ruskies to the moon? Are, are there flying cars or anything like that? Come on, lay it on me. I don't know what to say. Well, thanks for telling me the truth, I guess. Deal's a deal. What are your questions? Unless your friend had survival training, he's probably dead if he was unlucky enough to wind up here. I haven't seen a human aside from you in ages, though. So, uh, try to keep hope alive. Matter of fact, well, well. Didn't know it was a lady friend we were talking about, or I'd have been more delicate. You sweet on her, or what? <laughs> I'm just teasing. Hang loose, soldier. Well, this ain't story hour, so I'll try to keep it brief. When I was a new recruit, I was sent here on a recon mission with my squad. We were captured by the Pan. Thanks to our captain, we managed to escape. But we were separated. We never saw our commanding officer again. He must have died and stayed dead. But the rest of us, well, we died and then somehow reappeared at the stone we used to travel here from Earth. We were the same, but older. Bizarre, I know. Long story short, the stone stopped working, so we were trapped here on Yesha for good. We would have died if not for our training and the things our captain had taught us about this world. Damned if I know. We were soldiers, not scientists. I bet Captain Ford could have figured it out. But like I said, we'd already lost him. I'd have done anything to fix that thing. But no dice. We were stranded in this hellhole. Over time, the rest of my squad died one too many times and never showed up again. Eventually, you age out of that trick, I guess. Hey, I'm no spring chicken, so I'm likely on my last leg myself. That isn't funny. Don't you dare sully the memory of our dearly departed commanding officer. He was the greatest man I've ever known, aside from my pops. He deserves better than that. I never told you his first name. Holy smoke. Today just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Well, hell, we thought he was dead. 
So I bet he assumed the same. That or he escaped, but then couldn't get back through that broken stone. I know he would have come back for us if he could have. I can't believe he's still alive. If I ever reunite with that brave bastard, I'm gonna punch him right in the kisser and then give him the biggest hug he's ever had. Sounds like you've done a lot of traveling. You know, when I was recruited, I thought I'd see the whole world. Never imagined I'd wind up leaving the whole world behind. I'll admit, I miss being around humans. It gets lonely. Oh, I'd give anything to sleep in a soft bed again. Or sit by a fireplace. Do they still have those? With a hot cup of coffee? Shit. I don't usually let myself think about coffee. Hmm. Some wounds run too deep. Right. If things are as bad as you said, I guess I shouldn't have assumed stuff like that still exists. Never mind. It's... It's... Nothing important. A lot. I used to write down things that I remembered so I wouldn't forget them. But... Well, I got too depressing. I remember... Seagulls fighting over crusts of bread on the beach. Red, white, and blue flags waving proudly over perfectly manicured lawns. I remember mop tops on television making the girls go wild. <laughs> Birthday candles and the smell from Ma's kitchen when she made Thanksgiving dinner. Stacks of new jeans in the stores and kids laughing in the park. And my sweetheart, who I left behind. Her name was Dawn. I I, I remember her a lot. The smell of her perfume. The way she blush when I'd compliment her dress. Her red Mary Janes. She, she's dead by now, but believe you me, that chick was far out. One last thing before we part ways. Tell it to me straight. Do you know of a way to get back home? Now, I'm not big on asking for favors. I've been in survival mode the vast majority of my life. But I'm asking you this. When you go back, will you take me with you? Words can't express what I'm feeling right now. Thank you. In fact, here, take this. A little token of my appreciation. It's not much. But it saved my hide more times than I can count. Won't be needing it anymore, so I want you to have it. Now, go and do whatever it is you came here to do. I'd go with, but uh, truth be told, I'm a rickety old man now. I'd only slow you down. Finish your mission, and come back. I'll be waiting. Let me know if I can help with anything. Remember, the mission always comes first.
looks important. This isn't over. It can't be over. This new truth has been... It has been... Just now that I am glad for the company. What did I find? If it must know, proof of heinous betrayal and cruel misuse of power. And, and the downfall of my lost tribe at her despicable hands. 
Once the Pan Priesthood had pried every last secret of the Living Stones from the captured goddess Lydusa, they granted her the mercy of truth. A bitter truth that would ruin everything they'd worked so hard to build. See, Thelos had long ago died from injuries sustained during his capture. A tragic and unintentional loss as he was well loved by his people. But the goddess went mad! In her fury, she broke free from her prison! Then she... She... She murdered them. In a cold, cruel rage, she turned the Pan's living constructs against them. And together, they swept through that utopian kingdom and decimated the lost tribe. Only the priests remained. Confined to the throne room. Drenched in blood, she demanded Thelos' body, but it had long since been burned. They could not comply even if they wished to, but she did not care. She is incapable of such emotion. She killed them! And that was that. The end of my lost tribe. They're gone. Destroyed. Forever. All because of a failed goddess did not think us worthy of her power. She must pay. It is wrong. Wrong! <laughs> Walt is speechless. My lost tribe is no more. Thelos was unintentionally killed in his struggle with the priests. When they eventually told Ledusa, the captured goddess, she escaped and destroyed them all. Every last pen was ripped to shreds without a trace of mercy. Even the ones who had faithfully worshipped her all that time. Those who had nothing to do with the priests and their schemes. The younglings. The elders. None survived. All because she did not believe us worthy of her power. Must we, Pan, always be treated like dirt by the ones who rule over us? Is there no other fate for my kind? I swear I will make her pay. There... There must be a way. There it is. That is the end of the story. The end of Walt's dreams. The end of everything. Please, do not make me speak of it again. I am... unwell. What does it think is the matter? My hopes and dreams have crumbled and fallen. The lost tribe is no more, and the secrets of her power are lost. I will never escape. It is either a life of loneliness in the jungle, or of deplorable servitude back home. I cannot go back. I will not go back to that life of misery. But I cannot hide in the wreckage of the lost tribe either, barely scraping by. There is nothing left for me. My dream is dead. I am a walking corpse. Truth be damned! I was not doing this for truth. I wanted to find the lost tribe and join their society. And once I found out about their power over stones, I had foolishly hoped to overthrow Genus and her tyrannical hold over the pen. I dreamed of a Yesha where every pan could rise and fall based on their own merits, where they're free to choose what shape their life will take, where there is no cabal of immortal elites who treat us like expendable pawns. But it is over. Finished. The lost tribe is gone, and the goddess, her secrets are her own once again. It is hopeless. Ask or do not, buy or do not, it does not matter anymore. Buy or do not, it does not matter anymore. It is a voxel deck, but more than that, it is Walt's friend.
shit.
Is that all you got?
This looks important.
right? Come and get some.
You pieced the Lydusa back together. All my shards united again. I am whole. I am me. How long was poor Lydusa's shatter split? So long. Too long. I recall it now. I was waiting for my darling Thalos. On each ruby moon, he made a pilgrimage to my temple and sent all the priestlings away. The night belonged to only he and I, Thalos and Lydusa. But that night, the terrible priestlings betrayed him. They told Lydusa they would kill her Thalos if I didn't obey. So I did. They locked me in this cold, empty temple. Made me sing the stones to life. More, and more, more still. Yet I obeyed. Anything to save my Thalos. But Lydusa was a fool. The priestlings had already killed her precious Thalos. They lied to me. So I shed this fragile mortal body. And I... I remember little after that. Only the screams and the wrath rattling and grinding inside. It's quiet now. But the hurt. It still hurts. My Thalos is gone, beast. What should this poor godling do? I will. I will. I'll remember him and sing. I'll teach the stones the song of Thalos. And these lands shall sing of him forever and ever. I do hope you can forgive Lydusa. She... I was not myself. I'll remove my stone touch curse from your poor squishy flesh. Now I can leave this guild cage of cruel, cherished memories. And cherish them I will, for they are all precious. Even the cracks and the shards, the broken, painful pits. And the pieces that are missing still. They too are precious, because they're me. They will always be me. And I sense something else. You seek to save something precious, too, don't you? I can hear it in your life song's hum, a tune harmonious with my own. This spirit of the land would aid you. I will grant you a precious piece of myself. Thank you, sweet beast. I hope you find what you seek.
Here we go. seen anything like this before.
It returns. <laughs> but of course it has. Long ago the Paxultec and I spoke of songs and... Ah, of course. It is not the same Paxultec. Forgive me. The horns, it does not have them. <laughs> A new friend then. Hmm? So what brings it to beleaguered Yesha? Hmm. It speaks of the one of many. The once god and guardian of the pan. There is, or was, no being in Yesha more powerful. Yet now it is corrupted. It rests now within the Thane, befouling its very leaf and limb. Travel through this temple, to the far woods, and on to the Widow's Court. The Thane can be found thus. But beware, friend Paxultek. The Thane is a dark place, bedeviled by the rot that now consumes our forest. Tread lightly. Yes. Ask its questions, Paxultek. Quite so. Paxultek have graced this world for generations. The Elder, the one it calls for. The Destroyer, to whom many faces fell. The Wanderer, who faced the Ravager and lived. Alas, songs are not song of Paxultek, but I am blessed to have met many. Its kind bring this one joy and song. I rest only. These lands have not been safe since the one of many was taken from us. Yet none have bothered me here as of yet. The forest dies, Paxultek. The balance has either failed or betrayed us. There is little hope now, except in song. Even now, yes. Corruption swallows all things, and the balance is held in check. Or perhaps the balance turns against the pan. The outcome is the same. It began slowly at first. A remote grove in the forest. Then the death of our god. Now even the beasts, the gods, and nature itself succumb to the rot. Some blame Paxultek. But though Paxultek have come and gone, the rot both precedes and remains. If fault lies anywhere, I think it may lie with the pan. Praise be the one of many. Mortal faces lie. But the one of many is incapable. Veracious beyond question. So goes the song. The god of many faces has watched over every generation of the pan, even before our people found Yesha. Even when our songs praised the tree over the god, yet our negligence brought the cost. And the one of many was killed by, forgive me, a most recusant Paxultek. Now the waning of our great tree has allowed corruption to come, infecting our once mighty guardian. I fear greatly for Yesha, friend Paxultek. But we must hold faith in the balance. Ah, the Eternal Empress, Genus the Perennial, Mistress of the Thane, favored of the... Uh, the... Uh, <laughs> uh, forgive me, uh, Great Genus has so many titles, I can scarce remember them all. It was she who discovered the Tree of Life, and it is she who brings peace to the Pan for generation after generation. The Thane is our life, the Empress our root. Yet the Tree wanes, and corruption devours Yesha's every corner. Her divine permanence has protected us for long and long, but is she as enduring as the songs say? 
Listen to me. <laughs> I must trust the songs. Hope and faith are kin. One cannot have one without the other. Hear the wind, friend Paxultek. It sings to us all. Yes. This place gives me the creeps.
great. Okay, this is it.
place. Great.
summons me from my ethereal wanderings. Luzar. What kind of beast is this? Hmm. Paxel Tech. I can share my wanderings with you. But first, I seek the knowing, the truth of nature held within your ark. You want to answer? So I will ask. Answer these questions true, sweet beast, so that your ark may be known and your eye may open. And do choose wisely. Answer from your heart. A handsome and powerful god visits Yesha with the promise to eradicate conflict, disease, and all suffering. In return, he demands a sacrifice, the life of a single young Pan. Do you give him what he asks? Now let me think. Oh yes! Your closest friend is about to be wed. It is the day of the ceremony, and all are happy. But for you... For you have learned that your friend's betrothed has had a liaison. If you tell them, it will ruin their grand day. If you don't, it may lead to later grief. Do you stay silent and enjoy the party? Or tell the truth and ruin the day? I see your wheels turning, sweet beast. You are part of a group of druids who have been taken hostage by a warlord. One of the warlord soldiers succumbs to your charms and says he will help you escape. However, the others must be left behind to die, though all have done nothing. Do you abandon your fellow hostages, or do you face death together? I see. Your daughter has been killed. The murderer is arrested, and after many years, they are sentenced to death. Before the sentence is carried out, they come to you and explain that they are truly sorry, and they ask for your forgiveness. Nothing you say will change their sentence, nor bring your daughter back. Do you forgive them? It's not every day a question determines the course of your destiny. Or is it? You lead a mountain expedition that is stranded in the lofty reaches. Your retinue includes a family of six with an inherited nutrient deficiency. One individual's kidneys contain large amounts of this nutrient. The family can be saved if you remove this individual's kidneys to extract the nutrients. The would-be donor is opposed to this plan. They will not die, but their health will be forever compromised. Do you save the family, or do you let the family suffer by sparing the unwilling donor? I see. You have chosen your path, sweet beast. Your will is strong. The fire of the Ravager's eye glows within you. In the arc of every being, there are two eyes. We may see out of either, but most favor one over the other. The Ravager's eye is dynamic, driven, and endlessly hungry. Yet for all its power, its vision is clouded. The eye of the Ravager rarely sees beyond its own satiation. Like an animal chasing its tail, it knows no rest. The Doe's eye sees only what is before it. The gift of the Doe is subtle, easily missed. It is a most mysterious presence inside oneself. Conferring power without force, just as the doe itself cannot be sought, nor tracked, nor hunted. By answering true, sweet beast, you give me a wink, and now the gifts of your dominant eye will be open to you. Hmm. Would you care to hear a tale? 
It is about those who see as you do. I will tell you the tale of Belgoth, who also saw with the Ravager's eye. Belgoth lived in the era before the Root first bedeviled the pan and nipped at their hairy hooves. Belgoth was Drinkmaster of Flint, a village beyond the hill. One day, when Belgoth was traveling far afield, Flint was raided by bandits. They laid waste to every soul, old and young. Belgoth returned to find everyone he cared for watering the soil with their blood. Well, Belgoth tapped his store of spirit, filling Growler and Jeroboam by the gaggle, and he hoofed himself to my grove. Where lies the bandit's lair? he demanded. His eye was open, and I had no reason to deceive him. At my direction, Belgov tintinabulated to their den. There, he smashed a jug on his horns and struck Flint with steel, and Belgov was reborn as a flaming figure of vengeance. He charged into the bandit's lair, hoof over hand, and in his enemy's bosom, the remaining stock of spirit took spark with explosive result. Some consider this a waste of life, for could not Belgoth have traveled elsewhere and rebuilt what he had lost? But I'll tell you this. Flynn's sister village stood free from bandit attacks for many years after that day. Belgoth's blaze of glory saved it. He died with the Ravager's eye open and no mercy in his heart. Terrible waste to drink, though. Before we go any further, I must ask, I sense you carrying something. Something that belonged to my sister. <gasps> that ring. Why do you have it? It is my sister's ring. This can only mean one thing. You killed her. Ah, the mortal misunderstands. What you destroyed was not my sister. Not as I knew her. The root had... consumed her. She suffered in that form. You... Have freed her on behalf of all of my sisters. Thank you. Keep her ring and treasure it with our gratitude. Oh, oh it has been long since I felt this relief. Dare I say joy? Now. What can I do for you? You stand before Myrdra, spirit of the natural world, daughter of stem and stream. My sisters and I are the glorious weavers of all wild beauty. When mountain, spring, and sturdy tree trunk take your breath, sweet beast, that is us. That is our blessing. An immeasurable number. Mother Stem and Mother Stream rely on us to sprawl and grow. Though we don't often commune with beasties such as you. Not in this age. Especially not since what happened to Kaula. A tragedy, beast. Tragedy most cruel. Kaula was fascinated by mortals by your lives and stories. Unlike most of us, she made herself no secret, and you worshipped her with your short lives, even built her a house, a temple, you called it. The Root found her there. We godlings are not easily unwoven, however, and it slew her not, but perhaps it would be better if it had. For what remains is no longer the sister I knew. But we hold happy thoughts. 
Regret only wastes one life with another. Is there something else we can talk about? By day, a dappled glade of emerald branch and golden leaf, carpeted by downy moss. By night? By night, sweet beast. The trees bewitch the lost and inebriated. Or so it was before this age of extermination. How I long to return to play. This age, for me, holds only decay. The moon is power, beast. A superior moon is potent. A blood moon, infinitely more so. The moon hunts close to Yesha. When he does, his pull on both the tides and your mortal instincts is more intense. And when the Lady Sun joins, the concoction is cosmic. The ancients called it the Wounded Brightness. The Blood Moon heralds the beginning of an end. None know. It changes from age to age. But it is always something big, sweet beast. The Blood Moon promises a show of shows. Now, have I yet sated your hunger for knowledge? Or is there more, you would ask? May the Ravager's Eye guide you to glory. Here we go.
Okay, this is it.
Uh, well, the goat with the flute said the big tree was nearby.
That's over.
This isn't looking good. Here we go.
All right, come and get some. 